honor you today, Lord. We bless you. And Father, as people have sown today in faith, knowing that you are their provider, I thank you, Lord, that every seed that has been sown today is a supernatural seed that will produce a supernatural harvest. Lord, you receive the glory. For you're the one who has given us the seed and you're the one who brings about the harvest process. And you're the one who blesses our lives. And so, Father, we thank you. We praise you and we glorify you for the opportunity to be able to participate in the miracle that you're providing for us. Every need met, every bill paid, every debt wiped out in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe it? I said, do you believe it? Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Ushers, if you could please collect the offering buckets. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you again, worship team. I love that song. I just love all the songs they do, though. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We're, we're so blessed to have such powerful worship here. It's, it's powerful. Oh, it, it is unbelievable. The anointing, the anointing is so strong. The anointing is so strong. And it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Doesn't break the yoke, it destroys. <laughs> Gone. Nothing left. You say, you come in. Anybody here, you ever done this? You come into, you come into the service and you've been all weighted down. And all of a sudden you get into the worship. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm free. Oh, 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 oh I feel good. Anybody here ever experienced that before? Why? Because the anointing destroys that yoke of bondage. And all you had to do was get in the presence of Jesus. Get in the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit and everything's taken care of. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, you should have received a bulletin. It looks exactly like this. Last week's looked exactly like this also. But the inside is different. And if you, want, if you want to follow along, take out your bulletin. And I want to share with you this morning a message called Living Out Loud When the World Wants You Quiet. Living Out Loud. Now I want to tell you, I'm a bit of a professional when it comes to loudness. I know about loudness. I live in a house with three boys and a male dog. And I want to tell you, I've told you before, it's testosteroneville. And it's not, a, it's not bad. It's just they're boys. I have boys. Not that my wife and I wouldn't have loved to have had a girl. We would have. The boys are still praying about that. It was like, you know... I have effectively blocked your prayers. Um, <clears throat> now I know with God all things are possible. <laughs> and Lord, yes, all things are possible, but there's Pastor Derek and Pastor Cheryl. Bless them, Lord. Yes. <laughs> Living out loud. How many of you understand that the world, the system that is out there, doesn't want you to be an outspoken Christian? This side knew it. This side knew it. 
How many of you understand that the world and the system doesn't want you to be an outspoken Christian? The world wants to silence the church. I want to tell you, this is the river church. This is not a quiet atmosphere. It's not it. I mean, here at the river, I want to tell you, we live loud. We live big. You go to a big river, it's not quiet. No, it's, it's I mean, my wife and I, our family, we like, we like to do whitewater rafting. We like adventure. We love adventure. And, 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 and so we, we like doing that. But you go whitewater rafting, it's a noisy experience. And you get in some, you get in some really fast moving rapids. And I mean, it's exciting. And it's not just noisy in the water, it's noisy in the boat too. It is. You hear a lot of stuff, whoa, whoa, watch out, everybody's yelling and everything like this. It's exciting. It's wonderful. Now, if you're 95, that might not be your cup of tea. I don't know, but I'm not 95. And I, I enjoy exciting things. Ethan and, and uh, Bryce and I, we went, we went kayaking down the, uh, a couple days ago, down the, the backwater estuaries of Tampa Bay. And, um, and what was exciting about that was keeping out of the mangroves. Um, <clears throat> And so you get in, you get into, uh, Ethan was, was rowing along and all of a sudden I think he got a little too close to some of the mangroves and a crab dropped out of the branches onto his leg and starts running around and everything like this. And Ethan's not freaking out. He's like, oh wow, it's something to play with. Um, and so this is, I would just, you know, okay, we don't need any water moccasins or anything like that dropping in the, bo in the boat. Everything else we're pretty cool with. Um, but it's fun to have adventures. I put here on the notes, of course, your enemy wants you quiet, but we're not the quiet type. Why do people get quiet? When they're intimidated, which is a form of fear, okay? Intimidation is a form of fear. When you participate with intim intimidation, you participate with the spirit of the enemy. God never, God never intended for you to, you don't have to intimidate people. God does tell you to love people. Amen? So people get quiet when they're intimidated. They get people quiet when they're scared, when they're tired, when they're losing. That was funny for somebody. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're, Yeah. I mean, if you're watching the NBA Finals, you know, the last one, the Cavaliers, you know, their team was a little more boisterous. The Warriors were a little quieter during it and everything. Why? Because their team wasn't doing so well. It happens, though. When you feel like you're losing, you get quiet. Believers, you're not on a losing team. I said you're not on a losing team. Why are you quiet? The enemy's got no way to intimidate you, really. If you know the Word of God, you've got to understand he's got nothing. He has nothing at all. You shouldn't be scared. He's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You're not going crazy. Just be loud. Ah! Oh, I'm winning! People say, are you crazy? No, not a chance of that. The Word of God says, i got a sound mind. Amen. When they're losing, when they don't have anything to say, people get quiet. Well, why didn't you say something? I don't have anything to say. You've got, you've got a Bible with 30,000 promises in it. Don't tell me you don't have something to say. Amen. Why do people get loud? When they're excited, when they're happy, when they're feeling powerful, when they're winning, and when they want to be heard. I've got something to say. Amen. And you're not going to shut me up. Come on, church. The enemy wants you silent. You can't be silent. You've got to be vocal. You've got to lift your voice. Because you're, lo you're not losing. You're on the winning team. You're not a loser. 
You're not a loser. You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. The Spirit of God lives big inside of you. Amen? What you feed on, though, what you feed on is what fills you. And what fills you is what flows out of you. That's probably the problem with a lot of Christians is what you're eating. I haven't been devouring enough word. But I can tell you what all of the headlines are. That'll shut you up. Because then you get, then you get screwed. Like, oh. Christians, last Sunday, you know, they read the headlines over in Orlando. There's this shooting. This person who's affiliated with ISIS. So then Christians, they get this thing in their mind. Well, you know, we just better, we just better be quiet. We better not. We just better be quiet. No, you better get louder. You better get louder. I said you better get louder. You cannot afford to grow quiet. You can't be quiet. You've got to lift your voice. You've got to say, hey, i got something to say. I'm going to shout it, in fact. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm going to get loud. And I'm excited about it. Don't let the, intimi the enemy intimidate you. Say, no, oh, you know what somebody might do if you start preaching the gospel? You come into our neighborhood, you got to be quiet. No way. Uh-uh. We're getting louder. We're getting more bold. Why? Because we're feeding on the Word of God and the Holy Ghost is filling us up. And I want to tell you, I'm so full that I can't keep it inside. It's going to flow out of me and you're going to get it. You're going to get it. He said, well, Pastor Todd, you know, Pastor Todd, I took your eschatology class. We're living in the last days. Yeah, we are. So what? We've been living in the last days for a long time. Well, Pastor Todd, you know, in the last days, it gets, it gets kind of rough. Yeah, it does. On everybody else. Amen. I might, I'm going to have some persecution. I'm cool with that. Not everybody is cool with that. They say, I just want, I just want to close my eyes and let everything go away. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. I'm going to camp out on my least favorite children's song, too. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it. Baloney! God never said to be a little light. He wants, he wants people who are ablaze. On the day of Pentecost, they didn't get a little light. I want to tell you that there came tongues of fire that sat on every single one of their heads. They were ablaze, full of the power of God, full of the glory of God. They weren't thinking when the Holy Spirit came upon them, we need to shut up. In fact, the louder they got, the more the people came. What's this about? What's this? What's up with you? I'll tell you what's up with me. People aren't drawn to quietness. Oh, I so admire you because you're a quiet person. You're so wonderful, you never say anything. I want to be just like you. No tongue. No guts. Who admires wimpiness? You admire strength. Strength. Woo! You go to these competitions, you don't see a competition for weak people. It's a strong man competition. Who 
would show up to a weak man competition. Who is the wimpiest among you? I can't even lift the one pound dumbbell. Yeah, you go! No, it's a display of strength that attracts people. I mean, even on a team, a sports team and everything, man, we've got, we've got Euro, the Euro Cup going on in 2016. And I mean, people are trying to win, not lose. The object is to win. The object is to win. Do you understand that your life is about winning? It's not about losing. God didn't create you to lose. You're no loser. I don't care what anybody has to say to you. You are not a loser. You're an overcomer. You're a victor in Christ. You'll, you'll have some opposition. Suck it up. Deal with it. It's okay. It's an okay. Oh, not everybody likes me. You know, winning teams, not everybody likes them. No, they, they'll, they'll demonize a winning team. They cheat all the time. You don't like them because they win. That's why you don't like them, because they're winning. And your team's a loser. It's the truth. There's a lot of haters out there, folks. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. We pause briefly so I can read correctly. In Matthew chapter 10, it says in verse 16, <laughs> Behold, Jesus is talking here. That's why it's in red in your Bibles. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they'll deliver you up to councils. They'll scourge you in their synagogues, in the churches. And you'll be brought before the governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought. It's the same word. It's the exact same word in the Greek as what we read before when we were talking about offering. It's the exact same word. God forbid that you would think in advance of what you need to say. Mm, 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 mm. And there, well, I lost my place here. There, so. What you shall seek. For it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not, for it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother will deliver the brother to death, the father, the child, the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And you'll be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end will be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, you flee to another one. For verily I say, you will not have gone through all the cities of Israel till the Son of Man become. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It's enough for the disciple that he be as his master and as the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. And what you hear in your ear, that preach on the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear, which means in respect, in reverential fear, him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. He said, don't be afraid of them. They may say this, they may say that. You may be threatened, but you say, no, I'm not going to be quiet. I've got something to say. In fact, as I was in my prayer closet, as I was over in the war room, God spoke to me and God has given me a message and this is it. And you speak the word of God. We have no time for the church to be quiet. There is no time for us to be quiet. We cannot afford to be shut down. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. That is what's coming forth from us. We're full of the word of God. This is what comes out of us. Amen? 
Don't even think about, well, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Uh, what do I do in my defense? You let the Spirit of God take care of that. You let the Spirit of God take care of that. Amen? Over in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22, here the disciples, they're all assembled together in fear, and Jesus appears to them. It says in verse 19, in the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and he stood in the midst of them and he says, peace be unto you. And when he'd said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so send I, you. In other words, get out of here. Send, it's action. They weren't in action. They were all huddled together. Oh, what are they going to do with us? They crucified our Lord. What are they going to do to us? Hey, the Father sent me. Now I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And said to them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Because you can never live the way you're supposed to live without God being deposited in you. You've got to have a deposit of the Holy Ghost living inside of you. Amen. He said, even as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you you receive the Holy Ghost <sighs> I want to tell you the Lord is breathing on his children today he's still breathing upon his church today are you still being sent or are you cowering in fear there's people watching this all over the world right now I ask you the same question where you are. Are you allowing God to send you out? Are you going to be a voice? Or are you cowering in fear? It's time for the church. Yes, the river church, but the church as a whole. For us to stand up. For us to become more bold. And for us to speak the word of God. And us to allow the presence of God to flow out of us. It's going to minister hope to people. You know, and it's, it's illegal to incite riot. How many of you understand that? That means make people freak out. If you're, if you're around other people and you're in, a, you're in a building and everything. Why? Because fear spreads. Because it's controlled by a spirit. And even the world recognizes that's wrong. Trying to incite fear into people. But I want to tell you, the Spirit of God, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith, against such there is no law. And you get filled up with the Holy Ghost, you got the fruit of Him coming out of you, there's going to be a boldness inside of you. And there is no law against Holy Ghost boldness. Because you're filling people with faith. So you begin to speak faith out. You begin to speak the word. You begin to encourage people. Listen, I want to tell you that there is a great plan. God's going to use you mightily. Amen. Build people up. Build them up. Amen. You say, well, Pastor Todd, how do I allow this to happen? First of all, you've got to know the word of God. You've got to get the word of God deep down inside of you. Amen. I'm not just talking about one scripture or two scriptures. I'm talking, come on, get the Word. Get mega amounts of the Word of God inside of you. Eat the Word. Thy Word was found and I ate it. And Thy Word became for me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I've been called by Thy name, O Lord God of hosts. You've got you've to feast on the Word of God. It's got to get in you. You've got to chew on it. But you have to know the Word. You'll know the truth. Truth will make you free. Amen. Well, how can you know it if you've never gotten into it? People say, oh, you, you, you know what the Bible says. Uh, yeah, sure. No, you don't. You know it. Tell me what it says. 
I'll ask a lot of people. People come up here for prayer. A lot of times I'll ask people, what's the word say about what you're dealing with? Many of you, I've asked you that question. What's the word say about what you're dealing with? I don't know. Can you just lay hands on me? No. Because the enemy will talk you out of it. The enemy will talk you out of it later. If you know the word, you can stand on it. And you can stand against the enemy saying, you can't have that. Well, how do you know you can't have it? Well, this is what the word says. You've got to know the word. Secondly, you've got to meditate on the word. You've got to meditate on the word. Meditate. Meditate. You say, oh, this is one of those churches. No, 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 no. Meditate. Meditate. It's just like what a... You've got to get to the Word. You've got to chew on the Word. It's like when a cow has, has eaten. It gets on the grass. It goes and it sits down in the pasture. And it's, what, it's the process. I mean, it's, it's got it down in its stomach, but it knows there's more nutrients in it. And so it'll burp that stuff back up and it'll chew the cud. And it'll get more nutrients out of it than when it ate it the first time. That's what it's like to meditate on the Word of God. You've got to take the Word in, but then you've got to bring it back again. And you've got to push it around inside of you. And oh, this is what the Word says. You've got to meditate on it. The word meditate means to mutter. You've got to speak the Word. Oh, this, hallelujah. I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to speak the Word of God. What is it that you're believing God for? If you don't know the Word, then you can't meditate on the Word. If you're believing God for healing, He sent His Word and He healed me. Delivered me from all my destruction. He sent his word and healed me. He sent, past tense, he sent his word and healed me. And delivered me from all, all destruction. All destruction. That's bad. Destruction is bad. No, no, that's not what he's got for me. You meditate on the word of God. I'm, I'm talking meditate. You spend time, you close everything else. When you meditate, you close other stuff off. You think, this is just all, all that's before me is what my mind is on. And you say, well, does it work? Uh, look in the Word of God. If we look what the Word of God says in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, now this was a command. Every place, Joshua chapter 1, and in fact read all the way 1 through 9, but it says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Talking to Joshua. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even into the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites... And under the great sea, going toward, going toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Know what he's, what he's saying. He's telling Joshua, this is who has it now. It's the land of the Hittites. That's what it's known of. But I'm saying it's yours. Somebody else owns it. Somebody else lives there now. But it's yours. Mm, you're not getting it. Somebody else, somebody else is living there, but it's not staying theirs. It's yours. It's yours. I, the Lord God, declare it is yours. And he's not even, he's not even saying that, he, he says, all the land of the Hittite. God wasn't saying, you know, if I say it's theirs, then I'm not speaking by faith. He was telling, this is the facts. This is the facts. But facts change, folks. The truth never changes. Yes. Facts change all the time. You go to a doctor, they say, the fact is, you have cancer. You say, okay, that's the facts. Well, you know what? Facts change. Amen. Watch. Because I'm going to apply the word to these facts, and the truth supersedes facts. Facts are going to change. I'll come back, and you'll give me some new facts next time. Say, whoa, everything's changing in your body. Everything's improving. Don't know how this could be superseded by the truth. Amen. So he says, all of that shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Not just one time you're going to have victory. Woo! Hallelujah! All the days of my life, I'm victorious. Amen. Say, Pastor Todd, can you calm down? No, I live out loud. Oh, 
As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And then he says, be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only, and he says it again, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Notice he told him, be strong and be courageous. Why would he tell them to be courageous if it didn't take courage to do what they had to do? In other words, they had to suck it up. And they had to look at things and go, okay, in the natural, those people are still there. Let's pray and just, God, make them disappear, make them disappear, make them disappear. No. God said, I'm to go and take the land. I had to go possess it. Maybe God's telling you, go take control of that. Hey, be courageous. Be strong and very courageous. For unto this people you'll divide the inheritance. This book of the law will not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success have i not commanded thee be strong and of good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest what did he tell him to do meditate on the word meditate on the word get my word inside of you let it go over and over and over and over and over. Why? Because then faith, as you begin to speak the word, faith grows. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What's the greatest voice of faith you're ever going to hear? Your own. Your own voice is the greatest voice of faith you will ever hear. Your own voice. We've got incredible leadership. We got Pastor Rodney Howard Brown as our leader, but I want to tell you the greatest voice of faith you are going to hear is your own voice. Speaking the truth. Speaking the word. And your faith will grow. And you'll understand, yeah, that's mine. That's mine. I can take it. God said I can have that. So you've got to continually meditate on the word. You've got to refresh yourself. You've got to cleanse yourself. Washing of the water by the word of God. Amen? You speak it. You sing it. Whatever it takes. You know, the easiest way to memorize scripture is through song. I didn't say you had to be a virtuoso. Put the word to music. Make up a tune. Memorize it. Sing it. Sing it. My kids, they, they know all kinds of scripture. A lot of it just put to song. When I was growing up, we, all, all, the, all the, the worship and praise choruses, all they were was the word. It was the word. That's all it was. Scripture, 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 scripture. That was it. I memorized tons of the word, and that's all we sang in church. That's all we sang in church, yeah. That's why, and we still remember it to this day. Every word. You go back, you know. I still remember old choruses back in the 70s, early 70s, singing the word, singing the word, singing the word, singing the word. And you remember it word for word for word, and it doesn't leave you. That's how you meditate on the word of God. Just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going in you. Amen? And then you're not just got to say it, speak it, meditate on it, believe it. You've got to believe the word. You've got to believe the word. Mark 11, 23, 24. For verily I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say to you, what things soever you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Boom. 
That's it. Say it. Believe it. Receive it. That's so difficult. Oh, Pastor Todd, you're really stretching me. Say it. Believe it. Receive it. It's the word. It's very simple. Very, very simple. So you've got to believe the word. And then you've got to pray in accordance with the word. Number four. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. He said, is not my word like a fire, says the Lord. Like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. When, when you're praying about something, when you're praying about something, and you're praying the word, what's going to happen to what you're praying about? Boom! Boom! Gone! Why? Because I'm praying the word. His word destroys stuff. There's nothing left. Bam! Gone. Maintenance, you better check that now. I want to tell you, the word works. Pray the word. There's all kinds of craziness going on in the world. Your prayers, they're not affected by the craziness. All that's affected by the craziness is, I pray more. I pray more. I pray more. And I see greater answers to my prayer. In Jesus' name. That, that war room over there, that ought to be filled all the time. River Church, you need to get out here. You need to pray. Because there's, difference, there's a difference in praying by yourself and coming into unity and praying with a group of believers. One will put a thousand to flight, two will chase 10,000. What's three going to do? What's four going to do? What's 50 people going to do? I'm going to tell you, heaven will come down. You've got to understand the power that you have when you pray. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Fervent. That word fervent means boiling. The word fervent, when it's talking about prayer, means boiling. You mean you got to turn up the heat when you're praying. Stop praying these little wimpy prayers. Oh, God, help me. God, use me. Lord, expand my influence. Lord, I want to stretch forth. I want to break forth. I want to do greater things. I'm tired of seeing the enemy taking over in this area. In Jesus' name, I come against it with the word of God. You pray, you pray effectual prayers. You pray powerful prayers. Amen. Know your place when you pray. Know your place. Hallelujah. Now look at the last one here. Because I'm running out of time. Act. Number five. Act on the word. That means you've got to step out in faith. Act on the word. Not just, well, yeah, somehow God, God sent somebody. Yeah, I'm sending you, dude. <laughs> Go! Get out of here. I remember one time when we were in Tulsa, at the church there, I looked down at the congregation and I said, I'm really getting tired of seeing some of you. I've seen some around you around here for years. Why are you still here? Because you've got a call of God on your life. You've got an anointing on your life. You shouldn't be sitting in the chairs anymore. You ought to be out there doing stuff for God. Some of you called into other cities, other states, other nations. Get out of here. You say, you didn't say, oh yeah, I did, as a pastor. Don't sit on your blessed assurances. Step out. Step out. Now maybe if God's called you to make a difference right here locally, great, start here. But you understand that when you walk, it's more than one step. When you walk, it's a lot more than one step. You don't say a baby walked because he took one step and then fell over. Okay, no, you're not walking yet. 
You took a step. Walking is a process of movement. You're supposed to be walking with God. You got to step out. Amen. I have a lady in the Old Testament by the name of Esther. In chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. For if thou all together holdest thy peace at this time, what's the enemy trying to do? Silence you. If thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then there shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Sushushan, Shushan, and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and the maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. In other words, it's against the law. And if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to do what I have to do. I'm going to do what I have to do. Can you say that? Come on, church. Can you say that? I'm going to do what I have to do. And I want to tell you, what you have to do is not sitting in a chair quietly. God called you here to this church, but he called you here to come in here on a Sunday morning like you are today and to get filled up, but God never intended for you to have your rear end planted permanently in a chair. It's time for you to rise up. It's time for you to be vocal. It's time for you to step out. It's time for you to take ground. It's time for you to lift your voice. It's time to say, we are going forth. We're taking ground. I'm not going to shut up. I'm full of God. I've got to do something. I've got to do something. I've got this deep inside of me. You can't sit back and watch everybody else do it also. Oh, Pastor Tony, Pastor Karen, you guys are doing such a wonderful job on the outreach. And I just pray that God continues to use you as you go out. What about you, you ugly thing? What are you doing? Where are you going? Where, where's your harvest? Why should they have all the harvest? Why just the people going to summer school of evangelism? Come on. I was pumping some gas a couple days ago. Oh, it was after we did our kayaking thing, you know. I was pumping some gas. The gas was like, it's like going so slow. I don't know what it was. It was just like, you know, ding, ding. And, and I looked over and I saw this, this guy who was homeless. He was sitting on the, on the sidewalk in front, of, uh, in front of the gas station. I called my boys over and I gave him some cash. I said, here, I'm pumping gas now. So said, take this money, give it to that guy, and share the gospel with him. Why? Make your time count. Make your time count. So they just grabbed the money. They walked over to him. I saw him handing the money, and then they're bending over. They're talking with this guy. They're sharing the gospel, with, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with him. Because there wasn't much time, and then somebody comes out, hey, buddy, you got to leave. But had an appointment with destiny because we step out and we do something. And if you can do more than share the gospel, do more. He that gives to the poor lends unto the Lord. What can you do? What's the most you can do? Not, oh, I'm sorry, hey, what's the least I can do here? What can I do? Are you doing what God's called you to do? Are each of you doing what God's called you to do? I want to tell you, we don't have a large amount of time, people. We don't have a large amount of time. Our time is running out. We've got to act. We've got to, we've got to move. We've got to be vocal. We've got to say, this is what God has called me to do. Don't fear. Don't fear. Don't say, oh, what are they going to do? What do they say? What if people come against me? What if don't, somebody doesn't like me? For that, I included all kinds of scriptures here. At the bottom, scriptures on safety, security, and trust. I want you to look at those. Not right now. Meditate on these. 
God's with you. Don't worry about all the rest, amen? You gotta get the word of God in you. For you to walk victoriously, live victoriously, the word of God's gotta be big inside of you, amen? Without the entrance of the word, into our hearts and our minds and the reminder of the truth and the victory that we live in, that the, the, the influence of the world through all kinds of situations and circumstances, it will try to drown out the voice of the Spirit of God. You can never acclimate yourself to the world and the carnal surroundings that we live in. You can't acclimate yourself to the patterns and the thinking and speaking of the world. You've got to break away from that. Don't say, okay, I'll try to kind of fit in here. You don't fit in. You were never intended to fit into this world. You're a peculiar people. You're a chosen generation. God's called you out. He's called you to be different and to make a change. Not to acclimate, but to change. You're not to be a thermometer. You're to be a thermostat and to change the environment that you go in. You've got to change it. You've got everything that you need to do this. Everything you need, God's put inside of you. Church, will you please, will you please allow God to flow through you as He is capable of? Not just yourselves. What's God capable of doing through you? I don't even have time to get into the other notes But God wants to use you in a supernatural way. And he's not going to put fear inside of you. He's going to put hope inside of you. He's not looking at where you're you're, you're going. He says, let let me take you where you are. So right now, you've got some issues. Come on, let me touch you. Let me change you. Let me form you. Let me do my word and perform my will in your life. Some of you that you're, you're hearing this message here right now, you're saying, oh, I don't know how God could use me. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of a mess. Come on, give God the mess then. Will you do that? Will you give him something to work with? God loves you so much. And he has a plan to use every single one of you. Every one of you. God will use in a supernatural way. He'll use every single one of you if you will surrender what you are to Him. If you'll say, God, I know I'm not perfect, but Lord, will you come and take me and change me? And Lord, let me do something supernatural for you. I want to tell you this. God will do that. He loves you so much. No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, God's got a plan for you. For you individually it's not like my plan it's not like your plan it's not like your plan God has an individual plan for you because he knows all about you he knows where you are he knows what's going on and he's got an answer and he's not being quiet and saying I'm not going to tell you what it is he'll tell you everything this is how I'm going to use you And when you hear it, you may go, did I hear correctly? Because that sounds kind of, wow. Yeah. You heard correctly. God's plans never just enter into us and we go, oh, of course, that's the exact thing that I would have done anyway. It's not a God thing then. He's able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, you can ask or think. Will you give him your life? Will you give him control? Christians that are committed Christians, will you give him more? Will you give more? Will you stop being quiet? I want you to bow your heads, please. I've run out of time about a half hour ago. This is my passion. God loves you so much. There's many, many people that are here. Many that are here right now. You're not walking in fellowship 
with the Lord who loves you so much with your Father. But God's promise to you is the same as His promises to me. Yes, I'll take you. I'll receive you to myself. I'll make you my son and my daughter. But come out from among them and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. He's calling you to have you live a life that is different. Not power like the world. Not ways like the world, but ways that are different. Ways that are much more powerful. He says, for my ways are not like your ways. My ways are higher than yours. And tonight, God is, this morning, God is speaking to many hearts. He's talking to your heart right now. Your head might be telling you something different, but you know in your heart, God is speaking to me. And this message was so for me this morning. And for those of you that you know God's speaking to you, because many of you, he's calling and he's saying, come on, I want you to accept everything that I have for your life. Some here, you've never made the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. This morning, the Holy Spirit is moving upon you. You feel his presence, the presence of the Lord. He's drawing you, saying, come on, surrender your life. Others of you, at one time, you made that decision. You gave the Lord your life, but you've, you've walked away from it. You've cooled off. You've quieted down. You've compromised. But it's the same Heavenly Father that loves you so much, and he's saying, come on back. Come on back, I'll take you. Just like you are, let me touch you. Let me love on you. And then there's others here, you're not, you're not sure where you stand right now with the Lord. But you know that you need to be sure. So from all over this sanctuary right now, if the Spirit of God is speaking to you and He's saying, come on, come to me. I love you. Let me touch you. Let me change your life. I want you to raise your hand right now. All over the sanctuary. Come on, all over. Come on. As the Spirit of God is speaking to you right now. Come on. All over the sanctuary. God's talking to different ones. Right now, just lift your hand. Yes, I see these hands. I see hands. Yes, I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand there. Yes, I see that hand there. I see that. Yes, I see hands there. There, yes. In the very back there, I see you. Yes. Over there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, right here. Thank you so much. Yes, right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right there. Yes. Over here in the back section. Yes. Several hands going up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Over there. Thank you. Thank you. Several hands over here. Thank you so much. Lift your hand right now. Over here on this side. In the area too. Yes. In the back. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, hallelujah. God sees every single hand that is lifting up right now. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to look up this way, please. There's many people, even more than raised their hands. There were several that raised their hands, but there's, there's many more. You know you should have lifted your hand, but you didn't. I want to pray with you. I'm going to pray with every single person that lifted their hand this morning. But if you should have and you didn't, when I just did that call, and you're over here in this section here, would you please lift your hand right now and say, please, Pastor Todd, pray for me. Yes, yes, I see that hand. Several more hands going up now. Yes, yes, in the front section and in the back section, right here. Okay, over in this back section here. If you should have raised your hand and you didn't before, yes, more hands going up right now. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, more hands. In this center section here, all the way from the front to the back. If you should have lifted your hand and you haven't yet, come on, lift your hand right now. Say, Pastor Todd, please pray for me. God is dealing with me right now. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Over in the pie section here, in the very back, by the nursery. Anyone back in there? Anyone back in there? Lift your hand right now. Thank you, Jesus. And over here in this section here. Yes, I see more hands going up. You should have lifted your hand and you didn't yet. Lift your hand right now. Pastor Todd, please pray for me. Please pray for me. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, many hands going up. All right, I want all of you from all over this building right now, if you lifted your hand first or the second time, or even if you didn't, and you know you should have, come on, stand to your feet right where you are right now. Stand to your feet all over the church. Come on, Spirit of God is moving.
moving on you right now. Come on up here right now. Make your way up here. I'm going to pray for you. Come on. Come on. Spirit of God. still drawing the hearts of many people there's still some as I was speaking Holy Spirit was gripping your heart he's saying he's talking to you come on you got to give him everything come on step up here you don't know that you have, you say, well, maybe next Sunday. No, you don't know that you have next Sunday. You don't know what will happen this week. Not a single person does. You don't have the promise of tomorrow. You don't have the promise of later today even. You've got to know right now, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready for eternity. I'm ready. My heart is ready. I know that my heart is right before God. Anyone else? Quickly come up here before I pray. Come on, my friend. Come on. Come on. Come on, my friend. Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you. God's got a plan for every single one of your lives. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I want every one of you that's come up here, I want you to just bow your heads, close your eyes, and I want you to repeat this prayer after me right now. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I give you my heart. I give you every part of me. I renounce sin. And I accept the plan of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. For giving your life for me. I receive that life. And I receive your forgiveness. Today, right now, in the name of Jesus. My past is done away with, and my future is being given unto me right now. And I accept it, and I accept you, Lord Jesus. Live big inside of me, and I praise you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want to tell every single one of you this. 
that God has forgiven you completely. He loves you and he has a plan for your life. He accepts you. There's a call of God on your life. God's calling you to great, great things. He wants to use you in a very, very powerful way. You've desired this for a long time inside of you. And you've thought, oh, I don't know how to deal with this and how to deal with that. But the Holy Spirit is going to help you deal with some things. In fact, right now, in the name of Jesus, excuse me, sir, there's some things that are broken off of you now in the name of Jesus. Never the same again. Never the same again. Never the same again. The weight, the heaviness, gone in Jesus' name. All of that that has been like, like, a, like a yoke of bondage, been heavy on you, it's broken now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God has a plan for your lives. And He loves you. He loves you. God loves you, my friend. God has a plan for your life. I look and I see that in your eyes as I'm looking at you. God wants to use you in a supernatural way in a greater way than what you can even understand. Accept his plan for you, run with it. Run with it, it's important that you run with the plan of God. I mean, move fast with it. Move fast, come up here. Thank you, Father, for this man. I thank you for the touch of God upon his life. And the plan that you are revealing to him in the name of Jesus, he will walk it out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sometimes God will just highlight something to me and I'll just see it real quickly. But for every single one of you, there's a plan that God has. Your choice is to step into it. Your choice, step into the plan. All the way into the plan. Everything else, no more. The plan of God. Ooh, my friend, the black shirt. That's you. The plan of God is great for you. Great for you. There's an anointing that God has for ministering to many, many others. Multitudes. Come over here. Multitudes. God will use you to minister to multitudes. Not just an occasional person here or there. Some things that he wants to do. Supernatural things in you. For you and through you will you accept it you'll do it you'll run it you'll run with it thank you father right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i thank you for transformation taking place in this life now in the name of jesus the fire of god in the name of jesus in the name of jesus you need to come to bible college my friend you need to be in bible college God's got a radical plan for your life. A radical plan for your life. He's going to turn you upside down. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Mm.